Greetings, everybody out there at Internet Land. My name is Troy Benier, and this is the Miami International Science Fiction Film Festival. And here we are today with an exciting, exciting discussion from a filmmaker who's not just a sci-fi filmmaker, but also a fantasy filmmaker. This guy has produced something that is on the scale of Road Warrior versus Mandalorian. Okay, we're talking something totally out of this world. His film is called Pinwheel Horizon. And here we have Brooklyn Murphy joining in with us. How you doing, Brooklyn? Hey, bro. Hey, Troy. How you doing? Oh, Streaming live incredible. from Miami, Florida. Nice this and sunny here. Nice tranquilo, and sunny. Tranquilo. And we are so Florida. excited to have Ian, uh, Pinwheel Horizon. Very Woo! cool film. Very cool film. And we have Ian. Hi, Thank you Ian. so much, uh, Troy and Brooklyn. It's really, it's great to be with you both. Thank you. We're honored. We are really honored. Your, your film was really cool. Uh, oh, so many nice I have many, so many questions to ask you. So um, tell us about, well, like, who are you? Professional <laughs> background. Professional what's, what's background. Your, yeah, what's your synopsis? Yeah, uh, so Pinwheel Horizon is my third short I wrote and wrote and directed. My first was, like, uh, uh, an Arabic language uh, narrative uh, short film based in the Middle East, very political, very topical for the time, like a war on terror film about drones and militants. Ooh. And uh, since that time, I've been surprised how much genre has either like crept into my stories or completely taken them over and run away with it. My second one was called The Devil Needs a Fix. It was, you know, my version on that film yeah. Under the Skin from Jonathan Glazier, that great sci-fi piece with Scarlett Oh, I saw that. Whoa, with uh, oh, yeah. Scarlett Johansson, that one? Oh, oh such a great film. You know, it's kind of that, that meets good, yeah. early David Mamet. And, that, yeah. and then my third is obviously Pinwheel Horizon. And uh, yeah, I find that like, you know, I, I, being 45, I miss the kind of tactile genre stuff that at least I grew up on. Films like The Abyss, uh, mm. Star Trek, uh, early uh, by yeah, release Star yeah. Wars, you know, so my, my yeah. big, my big kind of conviction is like the human experience is tactile and lived in. And so I really nerd out at the idea of like doing things that are minimalist where there's a lot of space for the audience to fill in their own imagination. I think we used to be better collectively at doing that. Now it's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff too noisy. Mm -hmm. um, so Pinwheel Horizon was an opportunity to do something kind of spacious and tactile where it, it, hopefully if it succeeds, we invite the audience in to, to lend their imagination to the framework we have. And then also, you know, because you've seen it, we have really sweaty, dirty warriors. Like this is not a clean, yeah. clean world at all. It, it hopefully feels as relatable as it can, although it's set on a different planet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Planet right. Yiv. Planet Yiv. <laughs> planet Yiv. I love that. Planet Yiv. That's awesome. What, and, what and were... Where, um, do, oh, go ahead. I was going to say... I was going to ask what, him where, where you studied filmmaking and... Yeah. Boy, I heard you say Miami, and I am in the opposite corner in Seattle. Uh, and I've been... Cold. I, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm looking at it gray skies right now. Oh. So I have been here my whole life. I did, I studied film at Seattle Film Institute. Oh. Um, you know, back then it was literally a house on the backside of Seattle and it was sort of like mm -hmm. a, you know, an evening program. And I, my story is like kind of a lot of people that I've heard where like, that was great. And I definitely learned things, but um, it was like making crappy action movies in high school with my friends using like, you know, <laughs> Literally making our versions of Star Star Trek movies using ketchup for blood it. and like creating <laughs> films. So that's kind of where I figured that. out what I was into. And, uh, now we do corn syrup. <laughs> right, right. And uh, so yeah, that was that was kind of teens and twenties. And then I had written screenplays and fell in all of, fallen out of love with trying the kind of query lettered mm -hmm. LA approach. Mm -hmm. Came back in my thirties and thought oh, I've never written a short film. So that was from the sky. Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, have made the three short films. And again, I just, I'm as surprised as anyone to find mice. You know, we sometimes have this idea in our head. It's funny. This is, I think, Pinwheel Horizon is actually kind of about this, about identity and how we make peace with um, mm -hmm. things not turning out like we yeah. hoped. Yeah. 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 We have like an association of the way it yeah. needs to be. And then it's the not reaction. that way. Mm -hmm. I like to fancy myself like, oh, you know, serious and this and, but the truth is, yeah, yeah, I just, even the thing I'd like to direct next, the feature is like kind of an all out unapologetic ghost story. So I just keep coming. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I keep getting seduced by genre and that it's a really nice 
uh, companion for my kind of writing. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit, what is Pinwell Horizon about? That's a good question. Um, I wrote it after my dad passed away in 2019. He was, mm -hmm. uh, he was Washington State's first liver transplant, which my brother and I oh. learned at the funeral wow. from the, the, his doctor. Wow. And as you can imagine, like doctors don't do a lot of funerals, which he joked mm -hmm. here. Um, and so he was sick for 30 years. And my wife asked me after uh -huh. his passing, like, you know, what does it feel like? And I had this image in my head of these three warriors coming up over a hill and that mm -hmm. there would be somebody like Batman's Alfred uh, sitting, you know, a very Brit British proper mm -hmm. person sitting in the middle of the desert at like a table mm -hmm. with like a decree. And they're ready for this big uh, crescendo and they don't get it. And I thought, you know, because I'm always maybe with my ADHD, I'm always like coloring outside the lines or looking for the untraditional narrative. I thought it was really interesting. Well, I don't want to watch something else about winning. And I don't even really want them to lose. What happens if like the rug is pulled out from under them? That sounds really interesting. Mm. And that felt like the way it felt with my dad. I, I think I was looking for, you know, he and I were polite, but there, I was looking for some catharsis in his passing that I didn't find. And again, as we've been talking about genre, it, it just the mm -hmm. best way to describe that was not like writing a PhD dissertation on it. It was like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it would kind of be on like three warriors on another planet. So it was like a nice way to explore it and then i was thinking of documentaries like um lessons in darkness from warner herzog um you know how he kind of wrestles with this idea that um if we if we make something and our identity and it goes away we will sort of sometimes to our own tragedy like recreate it over and over we, we will not be able yeah. to let it so go true. So yeah the you know me being like the armchair psychologist just meaning i have an interest in it that sounded mm -hmm. super juicy to tell a story about. And then I was like, well, let's just have fun and like, you know, not do the bronze chested guy, almost play against that. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it was my dad's passing, but it was probably a lot of like, you know, entering midlife, reevaluating things of like, um, you know, cause we all, we all take knocks on the head and we have to kind of make peace with it. So it's exploring that hopefully in like a colorful mm -hmm. way. Yeah, and how do you how do you want your film to impact people? Like, what do you want them to take away from it? That's a really good question. I mean, for me, I I think that the the film's theme is kind of pointing toward accepting what is, even if what mm -hmm. is is not what we hoped for. And I I think in the case of Sira, uh, our protagonist, um, and er Eru, who is one of the three warriors, we see very different reactions to the the rug being pulled out. And I think the film is ultimately sort of inviting the audience to um, that sort of tightrope of accepting the reality that's in front of us. And and because in the language of warriors, finding the nobility in that, I thought there was, and that was challenging myself, I rely on dialogue too much. So the ending of this film has a very visual way of showing what I thought was uh, Sira sort of accepting the... Um, the loss of identity and mission and belonging and mm -hmm. making peace. And I think sometimes that can be a really good message. Yeah. Well, I love that line where she, you know, where they meet the migrants and then she, he, he yeah. immediately just wants to kill them yeah. and he thinks they're hostile. And she's like, you're not going to do anything. He's like, why? And she says something like, until you know the difference between who's hostile and who's not. And they're clearly <laughs> not. Yeah. You yeah, know, a yeah. simple I, little I mean, family is not threatening us, and he just wanted to like kill them for yeah, because he didn't know the difference. That makes me so happy that you pointed that out. Um, Stephen, yeah. who plays Aru, who is our, he was our so Ron, good, good actor, he's so good, really he's well good. cast. Oh, thank you. He was yeah. in my other two shorts, uh, and okay. um, yeah, uh, that that is definitely Lessons of Darkness from Warner yeah. Herzog. There, me kind of uh, distilling that as okay. best I can to say, you know. If everything is uh, whatever the hammer and nail, if everything's a, if all you have is a hammer, then everything's a nail. Mm -hmm. And then oh, that's a, good a one. little yeah. bit of that, as we're talking about, you know, Star Trek and how we can't help but get some of the contemporary politics into our stories. You know, there's a yeah. there's a little bit of me winking at. at oh, current, with the migrant thing. Yeah, at current things, which it's surprising how much it's become almost on the nose. I, I thought I was being a little more clever, but it's really like an actual thing right now. 
Oh, it is. Was it, was, is this the most challenging film that you've made? Um, I have since finished my first feature and Ooh, it's hard. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to say. I will say, uh, you know, of the three shorts, absolutely. Um, and I, I can't imagine making a short film um, that I'm more proud of or that was harder to pull off than Pinwheel Horizon. <laughs> the only reason I hesitate is because, you know, by definition, a feature is everything times 10. But as a short film, mm -hmm. I'm so proud of uh, what the team uh, pulled together to do. And it was incredibly hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love the costumes, too. Where did you shoot this? Um, believe it or not, because as someone who needs, you know, blue sky and sun like you enjoy in Miami, I, I kind of tool around in eastern Washington. If you if you take the uh, the mountains, uh, mm -hmm. it'll lead to something if you look in remote areas looking kind of like the poster that Troy has up. So this is shot in two areas in eastern Washington. Um, wow. The sandy stuff was called okay. Juniper Dunes. And we, that actually took us uh, kind of like the line from the Blair Witch movie, which I always loved, where, mm. you know, one of them says, you can't get lost in America, you know, and in, the, yeah. in the era of GPS, it took us about three tries to find one of three uh, sand dunes in uh, Washington State, and we almost flipped our rental truck, even locating it. Um, oh. And that was, you know, as hard one, I had written in the script Crater, obviously, that, that migrant scene, and was just slowly realizing I wrote myself into a corner, you know, you're not going to find a crater until we find Juniper Dunes and we walk up over and there was just this couldn't have been better kind of Martian bowl that where we filmed. And then mm -hmm. the second location that is this poster here and the more rocky stuff kind of for like the bottom of act two is called Sunfalls Dry Lakes. And it's a state park oh, wow. about an hour and a half away from Juniper Dunes. So both Eastern Washington, um, this rocky stuff kind of being in the center of the state and then the the, the sandy mm -hmm. stuff being kind of border wow. idaho and oregon god i would have never guessed that i thought maybe you drove down to california or somewhere yeah yeah no we were so fortunate yeah looked like you know, was it really hot oh yeah <laughs> so was it oh wow yeah okay. so it was uh i'm the person who gets sliced in the opening battle which was a good learning oh, experience okay because, you know, it's day one, um, shot one, and it's, in my memory, I hope I'm not exaggerating, like 95 out, and I'm wearing all black. Um, you know, I haven't been on set in a few years. There's wind and sand, and oh gosh, I it love was that. Uh, really, cool. really, in, yeah, really intense. And I, I just personally find acting and directing impossible. I know some people can do it, but I don't know how to have that split between my brain. So once I was done mm -hmm. getting killed off by Sierra, I felt much better just being back in writer director mode, but yeah, it was in the sand in the nineties. I mean, we had something like approaching sandstorms at times, actually this shot right here that you just showed Troy, um, Cassie, our lead does CrossFit and she's just an incredibly durable human being, you know, yeah, like, she looked like it, <laughs> put all the rest of us the shame. And in that shot where she's up on the rim and, you know, we're filming her reaction while Aru is starting to like do whatever he wants and like defy the chain of command. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was such a trooper, but she's, kind of batting her eyes and like trying to get through her takes and we're just getting sandblasted. And then when we, when we got to here, um, uh, the Sunfalls Dry Lakes, uh, it looks better on screen than it was. It was, we had like, you know, they were wearing blankets between takes and we had drizzle. You could, uh, so okay. it's, uh, it's nice. We, my cinematographer, Haley Watson, uh, thank goodness for her. I mean, she kind of captured all this, connective tissue that helped us stitch us together and she grabs this really ominous dark cloud moving in that we use in the film so it justified the change in weather but when we weren't in the in the sand it was actually pretty uh cold a few mm. days later i love this guy's costume that was just so so interesting and good color choice it's so yeah. fun uh melita buckstaff was listening in on my first meeting with my production designer, Erin OK. She designs costumes for Pacific Northwest Ballet, like a very prestigious wow. Wesco. I don't, to my memory, I don't think she's ever done film. And she throws out, uh, I'd be kind of interested in doing this. She sends me her portfolio and like my jaw hit the floor. And she's since gone on to win. Uh, and it, like you were saying, just the, yeah, I mean, she's, I think she's next level. And the nice thing too, in some of these films, 
uh, things tend to look flat, which tends to look cheap. And that was like my one mm. kind of mm -hmm. gut conviction was, Melita, can you please just make it look thick? <laughs> make the costumes oh. look thick. And they look so, uh, it, it, it's, it just kind of settles my stomach of like, it looks thick and layered, you oh, know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's yeah. like the yeah. migrant yeah. at the bottom of the quote unquote class status or the notary ambassador at the top, wherever they are in that pecking order on that world, it still looks like real lived in clothes and not kind of yes. fabric store one oh one. So, mm -hmm. so how have other festivals received your uh, film? What kind of feedback are you getting? It's been really positive, but it was very delayed. We, um, mm. I think all of us filmmakers are sort of understandably biased to what we make. And as you asked earlier, Brooklyn, this one was so hard and with yeah. the pandemic, we barely pulled it off. There was like a very narrow window between uh -huh. too cold to shoot in the desert or too hot. So once we did it, I was just, you know, I love it. It's my favorite of my three shorts. And I really oh, thought you're welcome, you're welcome world. And then we had about 70 plus rejections in a row. So what? I, ate, uh, oh yeah. what? I and my first two shorts did good. So yeah. I was, I ate a lot of humble pie. And after those 70 yeah. rejections, I think it was last uh, March wow. when we got started at Omaha Film Festival, and since then it's it's having one currently, including playing uh, Miami Sci-Fi, it's having kind of one of its two moments where, you know, before we put it online this summer, it seems to be kind of everywhere lately. So it's doing really well, but it was, <laughs> I had to sit around and watch the air not move through those seventy rejections. Wow. Yeah, film and being in film business, <laughs> whether you're a writer or filmmaker, or actor. Which is my background. Um, we got a alligator skin. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, that's 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 you really right. do. You got to build those scales up and uh, just got to keep on trucking if that's your passion, which it obviously is since your childhood. Yeah. So. I was I was baffled. I was really I thought we had done. I loved what Troy said at the beginning, uh, Road Warrior. You know these kind of these kind of comparables, and it's like I think we've done something with an aesthetic that's really fresh, but you know. Mm -hmm. You just never know the variables on the other end. So yeah, I was yeah. I was depressed, and then when it started getting traction, I've been really gratified because uh, to your question of Brooklyn, if it was hard, it was. But what makes me really happy about this is um, it was an ambitious film, but I feel like all of the struggle is on the screen. Um, that's really nice. You know, I don't. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel small to me. It feels like you know all the locations we fought for, or the weather we fought through really like supports mm -hmm. the story. So, and I also feel like it's, you know, kind of in the best way, genuinely not mine. It feels like such a great uh, set piece for so many cast and crew. So well, I, real, oh, real quick, can we uh, show the trailer really quick? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Here we go. Nice. Um, score. The score is really nice. I like those. We have about two minutes left. Oh, yeah. Anything else, Troy, you want to add? Um, well, uh, when you were talking about the landscape, that uh, all of that dark rock that's there, that's, I think that's all volcanic. That's uh, those massive lava flows that cover most thought. of the yeah, state. Wow. I yeah. wouldn't have known that. It's, yeah. a good, it's a good kind of otherworldly look. Yeah, it's it's you you picked actually one of the few places in the country that you know that look like this, and um, you know it's a rare place. Not many people shoot films out there for whatever the reason, but I yeah. think it's extremely exotic and it should be used more often. So um, that was one thing that really caught my eye, as I well love, as your project. I love that, that caught your eye. That makes yeah. me really happy to hear. The last question that I had, uh, which I think we have time for, is um, Star Trek. Star Wars, um, <laughs> or both? It's the standard final question for everyone. It's a great question. Uh, <laughs> geez, today, today, I'm going to go here. Hold on a second. Oh, he's going to pull it out of his hat. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go Star Trek. 
Oh, oh there you go. We got uh, we got Q here, and we have Picard. He's a Picard <laughs> fan. There we go. Yeah, right, I mean, just next stole Troy's heart. <laughs> is about as good as it gets. So for today, I think I'll say Star Trek. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. Classic. He's a classic man. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna get one more film out of him. What's that? Yes, because I see this one as like a TV series. I wanted to see like when they put their scarves on the sword at the end. I'm like. Oh my God, now what's going to happen? Like, where are they going to go? Like, where's. That's so nice to hear. We would love. We would, we I could see that as a TV love... series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We would totally. Love to it. I never had the hook until we were almost finished in post production, but now I'm like. Yeah, you got the hook back, right there. Anymore. Yep. Please do. Yeah. Awesome. Well, TV I'm so series. excited to talk yeah, to you both. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank I wish you. I could join you all this weekend, but um, we're going to keep spreading the word, and it's a huge honor to be included. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you Thank so you. much, Ian. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. Bye for Bye. now. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.